Safety in cars these days is a given. We expect it and for the most part we get it. But it hasn't always been the case. It's really only been since the 1990s that most manufacturers started taking safety seriously and buyers started demanding it. And along with that push came a new controversial acronym, NCAP, or the New Car Assessment Program. The independent authority funded by governments, motoring clubs and safety authorities aim to do one thing, independently verify whether your next car was safe. And it does it like this. Sure, car makers have been crash testing cars for decades and authorities have demanded minimum standards when it came to safety. But getting hold of that data that tells you which one was best and why was pretty much impossible. It was state secret stuff. Which is where NCAP came in. Same tests, or same four tests. There's a frontal offset conducted at 64 kilometres an hour, a side impact conducted at 50 k's an hour, and a pole test at 29 kilometres an hour, designed to simulate sliding sideways into a tree or pole. There's also a pedestrian test which looks at the injuries inflicted on a person at 40 kilometres an hour. Crash test dummies then feed all their hard hitting info into a computer for analysis and it's crunched by people in white jackets to eventually be presented as a star rating. It sounds simple and that part was, but it was loaded with controversy. Car makers argued that two identical cars put through the same test could still return slightly different results. And they also said that the barrier crash tests are not necessarily representative of what you can crash into in the real world. They're all valid points and arguments that still go on today. But the short story was NCAP was satisfying an appetite for independent information on how safe a car is, or isn't, as was often the case with those early tests. As with the early days, NCAP still isn't perfect. The Australasian arm, for example, has slightly different methodology to the same tests in Europe, so the results can be different. And car makers are working out ways to get five stars without necessarily fitting all the safety gear. Curtain airbags are a good example. Until 2014, NCAP only tests side impact protection in the front seats, so leaving those potentially life-saving airbags out of the rear won't impact a five-star rating. There's also no retrospective testing, so if the tests get tougher but a car hasn't changed, it can still hold onto its five-star rating, even though newer cars with the same level of safety will now get four stars. Hardly ideal. Still, NCAP has largely achieved its goal of delivering independent safety data in an easily digestible format. But if you really want to get serious about the test results, delve down into the nitty gritty, not just the star rating. Sometimes a car can get penalised for a relatively minor indiscretion. Something like a seatbelt warning light that doesn't beep long enough or loud enough to meet those test criteria. It's hardly a safety issue if you always wear your seatbelt. <laughs>